Hello, I am Lux Brush, and this is my channel for my thoughts, analysts, and other things about My Little Pony and other subjects. And this is my quick thoughts on part one and part two of Princess Twilight for season four of My Little Pony. Hope you enjoy. The first part was really good. Uh, when I first watched it, it felt a little slow, but after I watched it again, I realized they were doing a pretty good job of setting everything up and giving us hints at what they were planning for the second part. The comedy elements were nice. Pinkie Pie was almost a little too silly for me. I liked how we were introduced to Twilight's little bits of learning techniques to fly for the Summer Sun celebration. I like the part where she plows into the ground and doesn't seem to get hurt, and it's a great comedy sequence. I love how we have the great teacher, as it were. Uh, I use that with quotation marks and italics to really point out the sarcasm of Rainbow Dash trying to teach Twilight how to fly at these parts. I hope we get an episode where we really dive into her getting better at using her wings. I like how the episode really shows what everyone's been up to and how Twilight has been spending more time at the palace away from her friends. I really like how it shows how Celestia and her have gotten a little bit closer and Celestia feels she can be a little bit more open to Twilight about things because they're now more on equal footing and Twilight hasn't quite got used to that yet. It shows her still growing as her character. I like how they point out how Summer Sun Celebration was actually something Celestia connected to um, the sister, how she banished her on that day, and how it still kind of saddened her, and how she feels better about it now because it's not a celebration of her sister coming back to her, and how Twilight brought that about. I like how they end the episode in a semi-flashback kind of way by using a magic potion to show Twilight visions of the past, though Zakura calls the type of magic that Twilight had to use alicorn magic when they displayed it as actually more of the dark magic she was taught by Celestia in the Crystal Empire episodes. So that's kind of interesting, especially since I didn't see any wings on Samra, so it's hard to call him an alicorn unless it's a special kind of dark alicorn magic, which, eh, I don't think so. I like how, the, how that ends like that, and... I pretty much, when that scene happened with Luna at the very end, I was like, oh my god, backstory! Ah, world ending, cool! I like stuff like that. And I like how we, everyone assumes that, oh no, it's, uh, oh no, it must be Discord, and then we find out, oh no, it's not Discord. Though it's kind of interesting how he's not quite that helpful, so it's still playing more of his chaotic neutral, like, ah, I only give a buck if things actually are not going my way. We also, as we transition into part two, from the end of part one there, we start to get more information about how, where the elements, elements of harmony are from. I would like to know more about the tree of harmony, where it came from now. Is it, it grown because of the fire of friendship? I, I like how in the flashback we got to see all those nice decorations that really give us audience a hint of what era we were actually in before the script started playing out to see Luna turn into Nightmare Moon. Although I gotta say that sequence that happens in the second part where it shows the fight between Celestia and Luna uh, as being kind of short so there's a bunch of fanfics out there that are suddenly, fanfic writers out there suddenly going, oh, well my story wasn't canon anyways. <laughs> and um, we also get more flashbacks of to when Luna and Celestia defeat Discord by sealing him away with Elements of Harmony and what the Elements of Harmony originally looked like before they were um, transformed in The Return of Harmony, Part 1 and Part 2. Though I kind of saw how um, the moment the image of the Elements of Harmony being taken from the tree were shown, I immediately thought, oh we're either going to give up the Elements of Harmony or we're going to blast the tree with the uh, rainbow dream of friendship to heal it, but I was leaning more towards, yeah, they're going to give the Elements of Harmony up. I was wondering what they were going to do after that, and we see that we now have a quest for the season, which is kind of cool, because they don't usually give hints like that and actually follow up on it throughout the season, so I'm hoping that we find the keys throughout the season instead of just everyone finding everything in the, in the season finale, and I hope we did stuff like that throughout the season. Now that we have this set up, let's use it. It's kind of interesting how we have a small friendship lesson in there about even though your friends have changed their station in life, you're still friends. That's a good little lesson. Well, that sums up my quick thoughts on 
Princess Twilight, part one and part two of season four. Well, I'm going to have some more ideas eventually on this channel, so stay tuned.